Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And I'm delighted to be joined again by Anthony Sears, who is in the UK today. How are you doing, Anthony? I'm very well, thank you, John. Yourself? Yeah. Excellent. And uh, and for those of you who may not know Anthony, he is a leading expert on telephone engagement and he helps business improve customer service level and sales results over the phone. Remember that thing, the phone? Before you, yeah. could all, uh, before you could all hide behind email and AI bots and everything, there was actually a phone that you could talk into. Well, it's, yeah. it still exists. <laughs> that, 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 that thing that keeps everybody being really antisocial, pretending yeah. to be social online, is that right? Exactly, exactly. The, the, connected, the, the connected disconnectedness, yes. Um, <laughs> right, so what we wanted to talk to, uh, about today was, okay, so... Um, activities that involve calling and uh, you know making phone calls. How do you assess the value of those or the effectiveness of those, particularly in your CRM system? Because at the end of the day, your CRM system, you know, we're a CRM company, should track yep. your your activities, but it should really focus in on the activities that are of value. So, so what what's your thoughts on that, Anthony? Uh, well, last time we spoke, I mentioned mm. that I often say to people, don't count your calls, just make calls that count. Right. And what I mean by that is there should be value in every conversation that you have. Um, and actually, you should be moving people forwards through your sales cycle. That's mm -hmm. the whole purpose of why we're having these conversations. Um, typically, when I go and meet companies, there's three main things that they measure when it comes to telephone activity. And they tend to be the number of calls that you make the number of appointments that you book, mm -hmm. and the number of deals that you sign up. Right. Okay. Which are, are all, I think, valid things to measure. My problem is they quite often try and apply a logic that if you made 50 calls yesterday and booked two appointments, then that means if you made 100 calls today, you'll book four. Yes. Um, and anybody listening to this who's had to make phone calls realizes it doesn't quite work like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we've all got to Thursday and been a bit behind target with our meetings and booked in a meeting where somebody's very friendly and open, but we know there is no imminent opportunity. Mm -hmm. But we seize that because we have a target to hit and we book it in. Okay, I think we'd all admit that we've probably done at least one or two of those. Yeah, the, the, um, warm, the warm body syndrome, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so what I try and get people to do to, to measure or to, to, yeah, to basically measure the quality of the conversations that they're having, what I try and get them to do is to put a point system in place that represents every step within their sales cycle mm -hmm. so that they don't skip to the end too quickly and get a no, okay, mm -hmm. and that they know where they're going next. Right. So. The example that I typically always give is, particularly if you're prospecting or cold calling, as a lot of people like to call it, the first point I would say you would score is for finding out who the senior decision maker is. Mm -hmm. And you could do that by looking on LinkedIn, checking out the Meet the Team page. You could find it out potentially. Right. The second point, in my mind, is you've got to speak to them. And mm -hmm. bear in mind, I'm slightly biased. I am the telephone assassin. I yep. believe if you send somebody an email or leave them a voicemail and they've got no idea who you are, they're not expecting your call, that is basically worth minus one point. Mm -hmm. You'll decrease the chances of them taking your call because they'll start to build a negative association with your company or your right. name. Mm -hmm. So to score a second point, all you've actually got to do is talk to the decision maker. And sometimes mm -hmm. you'll find that the person who looks like the decision maker online says, let me stop you there, Anthony. It's not actually me who deals with yeah, that. Yeah. Let me point you at such and such. And that's actually a good thing. And particularly, I always think aim really high because mm -hmm. if the director tells you to speak to a manager, the manager always listens. Yes. If yes. the manager says it's the director who decides, it's very hard to do the jump up, but coming yeah. down is very easy. Absolutely. Um, but typically, to score two points, all you've got to do is speak to the right person. And as I mentioned in our last interview, the purpose when you're prospecting is to drop off your pizza menu. Mm -hmm. And all I mean by that is to say to people, make it very clear, you're not trying to take an order. You're just saying, this is what we do. I assume you don't need it right now, but you might be interested in the future. Mm -hmm. I'd like to give you a reason to remember me. So let me share a couple of case studies of companies just like you who I've worked with recently. Right. And you can see what they say about us. Yep. That's and the dropping off of the pizza menu um, is what scores you your third point. Now, what a lot of people, well, what quite a few people do is they twist what I say there. Mm -hmm. And dropping off of the pizza menu is in the conversation itself with the right person, yeah, yeah. not in the email that you're going to yeah. send. 
So it's not, it's, it's not just like running up to the front desk and saying, here's our pizza menu. Exactly. And that's where sometimes a week after training, somebody say, oh, I dropped off 20 pizza menus. I go, fantastic. And did you set up your follow-up calls? And they went, well, no, I just phoned reception to say we were dropping off case studies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like that that's not quite how it works uh but to score a third point all you really want is somebody to accept or feed, feed them to agree for you to drop off your pizza menu mm-hmm. and that is for them to acknowledge that there might be a future need and accept the fact that they are interested in looking at what other people like them are saying about you mm-hmm. quite often that's the end of a first call okay sometimes if you're lucky if you're really lucky with timing and we've if we've been in sales long enough we get really lucky every now and then yeah. and you know, if you sell it you phone somebody on the day their computers go down <laughs> yeah yeah exactly okay but usually that's the end of the call and what i would then say is to score your fourth point you need to do a follow-up call make sure that it got through their spam filter that's what mm-hmm. i i say when i follow up information i don't say have you read it because yes. if you haven't you'll either feel bad or feel like i'm I'm being impatient. Yep. So I just, I, I, I've not heard from you, so I'm assuming there was no immediate questions, but I just want to double check, did it get through your spam filter? Because mm-hmm. I think that's a reasonable thing. Most people will then acknowledge the fact that I got it or I flagged it is usually what they'll say. Mm-hmm. And they're basically admitting is I've seen it, but I've not read it. Yeah. Okay. And I always say, well, in which case, I'll leave it with you for another week or so to have a look. It's obviously not urgent, but I'll give you a call in a week or so's time because then I can tell you about the sort of test drives, the freebies we can do to show you how we would help somebody like mm-hmm. you. And I just plant the seed. So basically, to score my fourth point, all I need to do is follow up the information that I'm sending, the credibility stuff. Um, And then on that call, to score my fifth point, all I need to do is convince them to take a test drive. Mm -hmm. And as I talked about in the last uh, interview we did, in the car industry in particular, you're 78% more likely to buy a car once you've driven it. Yep. So I apply that same thing. And and quite often, you, um, if you're trying to dislodge an incumbent supplier, you sometimes have to deal with the scraps before you get offered a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. And you you need to do a demonstration of of what it is you can do. Because Mm -hmm. if you can do that, not only have you earned credibility by sharing real success stories, you earn credibility by then taking it the next level up by actually doing something for them. And quite often, what we're doing or selling them or giving them gives them some form of value where they can either make more money or save money. Mm -hmm. And once you start putting a value to that, you can then almost justify a budget to pay you to do the next thing. And actually, you can take them through this whole process. Once the for for a lot of people, the test drive is actually a can we come and see you? Can Mm -hmm. we have a face to face We'll give you a free consultation. Basically, we want to find out about you so we can do a solution sell. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the end of that that consultation, we'll give you a proposal of what we could do and how much that would charge. But we'll also make recommendations of things you could do by yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, So usually, if your test drive is to book a face-to-face meeting, and that's your fifth point, then your sixth point will be um, you need to send a calendar invite to confirm who's going to go and when. Mm -hmm. So there needs to paper trail and then for a seventh point i think you should phone people 24 to 48 hours before you go and see them to say yeah. hey john i'm due to come and see you at midday tomorrow just checking that still at that time still okay because i've got a couple of other meetings i could shuffle if i needed to yeah and i just it's a lot of people who've been in field sales have had that very frustrating thing of yeah. you get half there and then you get an email to say i'm really sorry can't make today's meeting can we reschedule yeah. and they don't when they want to reschedule four, and then they avoid your call for a month. And yep, it's yep. So if you want to keep it in the diary, you can do that uh, as a phone call. So that's a very simple one to seven points gets you your meeting. And hopefully, if you've got a good value proposition, you can convert that. Mm-hmm. And you would have a sending a proposal could be your eighth point following up and booking in when you're going to talk them through the proposal could be your ninth. And the tenth point could be that they've made a sale. Okay. Um, um, Case. And what what I like about this, Anthony, is the systematic nature of it, because I think for for a long time, you know, some salespeople have resisted the idea of being process driven. Right. But we all know that, I mean, you need a you need a, a the, the customer has a buying process. You need your selling process to be aligned with it and you need your activities to count for something. And if you do them kind of out of sync or all over the place. Right. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to replicate that. Well, it's. I think you, um, the, the phrase that I hear quite often is people say, oh, they just got the gift of the gab. Yeah, yeah. And you kind of go, yeah, but having the gift of the gab, you have good days and bad days, and, and you need to remember where everybody is. And, and I actually think that there's, there's two real good reasons of having this point system and understanding it is because 
you need to know what step you need to take them through next. Mm -hmm. And also, you can pre-warn them what is coming around, what's around the corner. Yeah. And then it's not a surprise. So like I gave the example of you might follow up the email and they say, well, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. I'm still quite busy. Uh, give me a call in a week. And I'll mm -hmm. say, no worries at all. Well, look, in a week's time, I'll answer any questions. And if you like, I'd love to talk to you about doing a little test drive to show you what we can do. And I'll plant the seed of where we're going next so that when we have that next conversation, it's, it's not really a surprise. Um, there's a couple of other things that I think are quite useful with it is that if you're in teams, what you'll tend to find is that different personalities will have different strengths. And yeah. some people will be great at opening the door. They're not afraid at, at phoning new people. But when it comes to doing the follow up, they're mm. not quite as assertive. They can't quite close the meeting. Yeah. And then you'll have other people who don't open up as many doors as the people we were just talking about, but are quite good at closing. Yeah. Uh, in those situations, you either team them up and say, look, share the commission, you open the door, you close it. Or you say, actually, you both need to learn from each other. You need to, you need to figure out how to get your closing question right. And you need to pull your finger out because if you opened mm. as many doors as him with your skill at closing, you'd yeah. be making as much money. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it will start to show you, and this is the beauty if you have a proper CRM system, mm -hmm. is you'll see where the bottlenecks are within the pipeline, within the sales cycle, and you can figure out who's got the strengths or who's got the skill gap that needs to be filled. Um, so it becomes really easy to kind of fine tune the engine so it goes even faster. And, and quite often when I go in, I say to people, I'm not here to tell you you're doing it wrong. I will mm -hmm. reassure you you're doing a lot of the right stuff. But if we can fine tune it so that you're converting a few more, that you're enjoying it a little bit more, then actually everybody's a winner. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and and we um, I mean, we we would totally agree with you. I mean, at, at um, on my putting on my pipeline of CRM hat, you know, one of the things that we did when building the system, there's a couple of things to that reinforce what you're saying. Um, one was the ability to look at we have an archive where you can look at all the sales that have been lost and where they were lost in the process. And to your point, you can go in, and it's a great way yeah. if you can go in from a team perspective, an individual's perspective, and go, just as you said this guy is phenomenal at stage one and two, like everything, and then he just falls off a cliff. Whereas this guy's really slow here. But later on, if he gets something through, he's dynamic. To your point, maximizing strengths, it's, it's a critical part. And the other point yeah. about having activities, we actually built it so you can have activities in each stage and you can actually lock them down if you want. Um, to your point, you can have your point system locked down so you can't move to the next stage unless you complete the action. So I, I agree yeah. totally with you about the idea of processizing things. Yeah, well, it just makes it step by step. It stops mm -hmm. people trying to skip steps and then wondering why it's going wrong because mm -hmm. um, that's often people just – don't seem to realize what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and like I say, once you know the exact journey you want to take them through, because I think I mentioned last time that there's, there's fundamentally three things you want to do with people on the phone. You, mm -hmm. you want to build or, or remind them of the rapport you've, you've got with them. So you've got to build rapport by being polite and friendly and patient. Then you've got to become credible. So you need to prove that you're credible using case studies and eventually even more by doing yeah. test drives. Um, but actually, you've got to create urgency and for them to want to take action. That's where your test drives really come into play. Mm -hmm. And that's and once you start to break it down into simple steps, it actually becomes very easy. Um, and quite often, those people with the gift of the gab, when they're on form, they're doing all of this stuff. Right. But after a while, you get a little bit sloppy or you get a bit lazy um, or you, you get a bit distracted and then you, you just stop doing that one thing. And then it stops becoming just a good habit. Um, and that's what I think a lot of people really struggle with. And um, th there's kind of two more steps that you should be adding to the end of that, turn them into a client. It should be that you should be getting case studies and testimonials yeah. after three, six months, 12 months, because actually – that's the ammunition that you're going to use to win your next client. That's the kind of stuff that marketing departments love. It's the sort of thing that you can put out on social media and drive the inbound that everybody prefers because mm -hmm. they don't want to reach out and be rude. Um, but actually, I think when you do it in the right way, you come across like a proactive expert rather than a cold caller. Yeah. But if you haven't got a process in mind and have had the, the – the foresight to do some preparation beforehand, have your credibility ready, 
things are going to go wrong. Um, mm-hmm. But I've worked for um, uh, some software companies in the past, and they've actually got something. Uh, one of them, I think, had a 22-point um, sales cycle. Uh, and it was the average was 18 months to get through it mm-hmm. because they had, every, they had some of the stuff I was talking about at the beginning. Yeah. But then they give you an online demo and you, you, you do an interview after the demo. Uh, then you get a then you get a trial. OK, mm-hmm. then so you get to try it yep. out yourself, then do more interviews. Uh, and it was there. They've got so many processes along the way. And like you say, they're not allowed to move on to the next mm-hmm. stage until they fully satisfy this, because then they know they know everything from the client to be able to move them to that next stage. Yeah. Um, and you're not moving people down the sales side, the, the pipeline where they shouldn't be, right? You're not having somebody in a late stage when really they haven't been properly qualified and in the first yes. place. The other thing I like what you said earlier was this idea about talking and identifying the right person, right? And I yep. think that that's a trap that some people fall into where they grab the first kind of friendly voice um, without really defining you know, what role do, will that person play in the process? Yes, you, you, you very much have to. The problem with just talking to any friendly voice that answers the phone mm-hmm. is the likelihood is, is the person that you've researched isn't that person. And you haven't got time then to research them before you start getting straight into a conversation. Uh, I think the example I gave last time was about IT companies and talking. Sometimes you talk to an IT manager, FD, they've got different values and, and things that are important to them that the other one doesn't even really care about. And that sounds awful because they work for the same company. Sure. Um, but once you understand that, it becomes much easier to talk their language. Mm-hmm. Um, and once, And it goes back to that share success stories that people can relate to. So the other thing that I often say is it's it's nice to say, here's a case study of another company in your industry that I've worked with, but sometimes you don't have that. And what you end up, which can be equally as powerful, if not more so, is share a testimonial that's been written by somebody with the same job title. Because I I, I often get them from a learning and development director Mm. or a HR manager. And actually, they use very specific language that if I share with another HR person, they're like, he gets this. He's going to lower staff churn. He's going to do this. (laughs) He's done that. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Um, Whereas if I use that on a sales manager, they just, wow, it's a numbers game. Staff churn is all part of the game. You kind of go, well, no. (laughs) Because you you, you set them up for rejection, a day's worth of rejection. Um, So, so yeah, but the other thing as well, particularly that relates back to the system and what you were saying about the history is where I think most sales managers gulp and put their finger in the air is when they're asked to forecast. Yes. And if you do not have a genuine pipeline that you know exactly where everybody is in that in that cycle, you you, you are guessing. Yes. Um, you've got no idea or control necessarily over the result you're going to get. So knowing and the bit that I always think is clever and, and a lot of people I know end up using spreadsheets. Well, mm-hmm. spreadsheets can be good if you set them up properly. But when you have a proper CRM, as I describe it, yeah. it will show you some of the trends. Exactly. And it's the trends where you start to make your subtle tweaks. And all of a sudden you go from a losing 12 percent to losing 8 percent. And all of a sudden, that's, and it's little things here and there that make that massive difference at the end. And, and fundamentally, and I'm sorry if you anybody is offended by this, but <laughs> most of us in sales, we're pretty lazy in the fact that we like we, we don't mind working hard, but we want a big result. Mm-hmm. And it's quite often that the least effort we can put in for the bigger result, the better. Right. Okay? <laughs> it's why the world of spamming came along because people went, well, I've only got to send one email to a million people. <laughs> They didn't realize that eventually we have to create a whole new law because everybody's spamming everybody and they're even doing it to friends. It's like, my God. Um, (laughs) But but that's just my, like you say, slightly swayed perspective of it because automation is great. Systems are great Mm -hmm. when they work, when we know how they work, because that's Mm -hmm. the other thing. I get asked to recommend CRMs all the time. And the only answer I can ever give is, well, they're as good as the training that comes with them. Yeah. Once you know how they work and you know that they're set up to make your life easier uh, and make you more successful, you will want to use it and you'll persevere and you'll get quicker at it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whereas if you can't see the point in why certain things are being measured around what you do, the temptation is to hide and do that. Don't worry. It's all up here. It's the gift of the gab and I've got it all up. Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) 
<laughs> now, well, this has been uh, this has been great, Anthony. Another fascinating conversation. So, again, just before we go, just tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can contact you, and what you do. Fantastic. Well, uh, obviously, just Google Telephone Assassin. You'll find all kinds of videos. My website is uh, thetelephoneassassin.com, but you've also got anthonysteers.co.uk. Um, my number is very easy to find. Um, that's all I'm going to say at this point, because <laughs> people do send me messages, and I do read them, but I'll be honest with you, people are very much gobsmacked that I pick up my own phone. I don't <laughs> have a gatekeeper. Unless I'm on stage or on the phone, sure. typically, I will answer. Um and if you want a quick answer, we'll have a conversation. Um, get in touch. I'm more than happy to do a test drive with people and perhaps uh, any sort of sales managers or people out there that are thinking that they know that they can improve or that there's things their team aren't doing. Uh, get in touch. I can set up a test drive. I'll do a mini uh, test drive call to make sure that you, you've listen to our previous interview and you know some of the basic principles the dropping off the pizza menu perfecting your pitch that kind of stuff um but i can then help them with some of their most common objections and show them how to either get around them or stop them from coming up so i'd, I'd love to hear from anybody um i have already noticed a lot of extra people looking at me and particularly from across the pond as well mm -hmm. uh, speaking with you guys so uh, I, I welcome tweets texts phone calls messages get in touch however you wish Excellent. Um, and as some advertising campaign used to say, it's good to talk, right? <laughs> exactly. I'll be honest with you. I, I used to use that in the, before Mr. Hoskins sadly passed away. I used to love that advert. And it is good to talk. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to go off on one, but I think that there's some a lot of people are talking about mental health and stuff at the moment. And if we have more conversations, yeah. I think we'd all be a lot healthier and a lot happier. Yeah, so. I, well, I think that's a great point to end on. Totally endorse that. Again, Anthony, great talking to you. John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. See you all soon. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.